Yuli Posti got jumped in Norway after all the optics that came out of the European Disc Golf Festival. Still has some questioning if it's ready for a major. Ricky and Paul turn back the clocks with a battle and even more this week in disc golf. What's going on all you disc generates? It's Swiss Cheese, the one with all the holes in his game, and I'm with the Disc Golf World, the YouTube channel that brings you all the disc golf action in a fraction of the time. You're watching This Week in Disc Golf, where I cover all things disc golf from the past week. Guys, if you enjoy the content and you want it to continue, make sure to subscribe, engage, or contribute to the Patreon. As our content and tour is funded by you, the fans, and allows us to hit the road, be here in Ledgestone currently and beyond. And for any of the fans attending Peoria, if you spot us, make sure to say hello. Yuli, facing speculation, rumors, and even edited video cuts, finally addresses the elephant in the room surrounding a black eye and injuries that has forced him to drop out of a major this weekend's Ledgestone event, and even putting his participation at the upcoming World Championship into question. Since the host of the Upshot podcast a couple of weeks ago stated that Yuli got into an altercation at a bar while in Norway, setting off a rumor mill. Complete with sleuth fans dissecting all social comments, coverage on both Joe Mez and the tour life, while waiting and even asking Yuli to address the rumors for a couple of weeks now. There's no question this story has been on our radar. We had info shared and like many, scoured for more information and proof. In all honesty, we nearly showcased this topic in a couple of videos, but with a lack of confirmation, silence from Yuli and other pros, along with the time that had passed, we were resound to the fact of being forced to shelve any long-form convo and simply would never be directly addressed. That wasn't until Yuli's post, which now forces my hand to not only cover, but also provide all the details we've gathered, what was shared directly and hearing on the course. Why he decided to break his silence at this point, I'm not too sure. Prior to this, there were simply rumors of an altercation that, though didn't seem to be going away, certainly wasn't gaining any traction either. In the post, Yuli goes on to say, I got the injury from being jumped while I was in Norway. I got picked up and slammed multiple times, kicked, punched, the usual when you get jumped. One guy turned into six real quick. Yuli certainly paints a scary scenario that no one wants to find themselves in. Here's Yuli in Norway finding himself being attacked by six people no less. That resulted in both physical and possible emotional injuries. So serious of allegation it has many questioning if Yuli made a police report on the violent attack which I sincerely hope so, as the severity of this certainly justifies it. Yuli did need an MRI and has a fractured shoulder, and in all honesty, is fortunate to leave with just the injuries that he walked away from. Yet comments on the internet has painted a far different picture, however, and matched the comments made on the upshot, saying Yuli was drunk, aggressive, combative, and running his mouth. One even stated Yuli was challenging people to a fight, painting this more as a f around and find out scenario than a random attack Yuli portrayed. Add the silence that followed the altercation has many questioning if there's a disc golf cover up here, more than just beyond the sunglasses and a darkened room that Yuli used prior to the post. Yuli had multiple platforms to directly address the rumors and provide his side of the story including his weekly Tour Life podcast, where there was never a mention of the attack, what was stated on the upshot, or what was the most liked questions in their own comment sections. And even if you don't want to delve into the details of the statement made, addressing the rumors around the community were just that as simply rumors would have gone a long way and could have put this to rest far earlier. Listen, people respond to conflict differently. Add the fact that he's an ambassador to the sport, a media personality, the face of a number of sponsors, captain of not only Discraft, but also the country at this year's President's Cup. That was a mere days away, which also could be the reasoning of him not making this public sooner. As some like to claim his silence was choosing to keep it quiet and have the focus on the events overseas rather than the attack. Certainly noble and a possibility. Waiting for a statement till after both the President Cup and European Open does seem to be justified, but why wait beyond that point? And if the statements made by those on the upshot and alleged people who witnessed the event truly are false or misrepresented, why would Yuli, as big of an ambassador he is, not want to address this sooner than waiting for test results and the severity of the injury? It feels like Yuli might have been waiting for this to all blow over, which I believe it probably would have after Ledgestone concluded. For the defender saying Yuli has a right to privacy and if he doesn't want to discuss it, it should be respected. That's a fair statement. However, with him dropping out of a major and possibly the world championship while representing our country, it becomes a disc golf issue whether you want to discuss it or not. With us on the road, of course we asked players and personnel attached to the tour what they heard and knew. These are some of the details we're able to share. 
We were told there was a number of pros who witnessed the altercation directly, while comments online seemed to corroborate this also. Which brings into question, if he was quote jumped, why did no other pros not step in to try to stop the attack? And if attacked, there was no posts, comments, or anger. Certainly there would be far more shock and awe surrounding this, no? No other players were named to be part of the altercation anywhere, only Yuli and Yuli alone. Instead, fans even overheard pros discussing at the airport, saying they were held back. That seems odd if somebody was attacked by six people, no? Everyone we spoke to classified the altercation simply as a fight rather than him being jumped or attacked like the post portrays. Instead, most said Yuli got into a fight for running his mouth. Even when we pressed by showing them what Yuli posted, most disputed those points or simply said his definition of jump must be different than theirs. There's still a lot of missing details that we will never get to the bottom of, but this is certainly more of a complex story than what has been presented thus far. But I'm tired of talking about drama, let's get into disc golf. Beth at 69. I just told myself, you've got to will this one in there, whatever you have, just will it in there. This man, unbelievable. This is what athletes live for, this is the moment. European Disc Golf Festival optics, professionalism, and spectator turnout not only showcased what can be expected from next year's major, but also pushes the bar of expectations for an elite series event for both spectators, players, and venue. Was by far the most impressive inaugural event to the DGBT Tour that we have seen to date. How the event was put together, organized, and supported is more than enough reason to make this spot a major over some of the more largely known European locations in Kroko, Yarva, and Ale to name a few. Though in its current layout, the course and how it played over the weekend had some questioning whether the current location is worthy of a major status, as complaints over the course being too easy, being lackluster play or drama, and some going further saying the disc golf action was too dull to carry a four-day major. There's no pleasing disc golf fans, but when there are comparisons to Emporia, we need to discuss it. Critics say the course provides few shot selections or decisions off the tee, less scoring separation, and like the beast, should be accompanied by another course. I certainly disagree. Even the detractors have to acknowledge this track showcases one of the best starting holes on tour. That and wrapping up on 18 isn't bad either. And personally, 17 should be included in that discussion also, but seems to be forgotten in these talks. Like all stops, the course is always more difficult than how it reads on coverage. This course does have low ceilings, tight long gaps, and challenging lines throughout, but does have some holes that can be tweaked. Certainly the scoring of pros reflect that, and the ones that did play spoke on the difficulty of the course also. Which whenever these debates or discussions occur surrounding any course, they only seem to look at the top elite performers instead of the event as a whole. Even Gavin covered it in just this last presser. The TDs and organizers could go a similar route to what we're seeing at Ledgestone this year by providing differing pin locations, could tighten the OB, along with what they have in store on improvements and hole changes with the elevation to the major status next year. Critics need to keep in mind this is a temporary course and the willingness and full support to continue to make this stop improve. Even if they didn't change a thing, though scorable, still showcased enough for this to not be a debate. Also, with this being a major next year, along with it comes additional coverage, dedicated camera crews, along with the additional sight lines those all provide, which will not only help the optics of the live coverage, but provide a more accurate depiction of the difficulty of this course. And what all of us have been able to witness should be deserving enough to put these comments to rest. If you haven't heard by now, the tournament showcased Ricky Waisaki setting a course record 16 under day one. It'd be his fourth course record setting performance in straight events, the third highest rated performance in disc golf history, coasted to a five stroke lead heading into the final, and had most of us expecting an easy Ricky victory lap. Only to see the familiar battle that harkens back to simpler times of frosted tips, hey-ho bands like Mumford and Sons, and where planking was once a thing. As Paul Macbeth would put together the hot round on the final day and actually push Ricky for the win. Even if Ricky's popped rib might have contributed. After bogeys on 13 and 15 that created a four-stroke swing had Paul down a single stroke on the final hole needing to hit the birdie putt to at least put pressure on Rick. Everyone sitting on the edge of the seat hoping the action somehow continues. Yeah, and of course, Paul misses the putt and with it handed Ricky the win. From chase card, Yuna Henninen was able to match Paul's 12 under on the final day. That moved him into a solo third place. While the Europe youth continues to shine with teenagers Ronan Kors top 5 and A2 Tuminen's landing in a top 10. 
In the FPO, Tatar would not factor on her home country tournament. Instead, it would be a battle among Heidi Laney, Missy Gannon, and Evelina Salonen charging from a chase card. Heidi came into the final with a three-stroke lead over Missy, but would start off slow while Evelina would charge by hitting six straight birdies at one point. However, Missy was in control, only to see her have a costly error with a Berdogi on 16 after three putting in the circle, as her and Evelina would end up in a sudden death, which only saw one hole and a missed 15-footer from Evelina, this one hitting the band. The tour comes back to the state with Ledgestone officially underway. That is for the ones that didn't drop out like Yuli, which included some big names in the sport in Ricky Waisaki, Simon Lazat, and Valerie Mondohanu. Missy came out and leads the FPO by two strokes, shooting a hot round 9-under, over 1,000 rated, on the day. Followed closely by Owen Scoggins, Holland Hanley, and Lisa Fakus, all at 7-under. The MPO race is just as tight as Aaron Gossage, Chris Dickerson, and Emerson Keith are all tied at 9-under, with four players only a stroke off, including the defending champion Cole Radolin, who shot 8-under despite missing five putts from inside the circle, most being birdie looks. Now let's get to some quick hitters already. Scott Stokely grabbed a day one ace on hole three at Ledgestone. This is the type of relationship goals we should all strive for. Paige Pierce helping out her friend Paige Shu retrieve her disc while in the water. I don't know about you guys, but doesn't this kind of look like a start of a disc golf stuck porn? Tina, if you want to go ahead and steal that idea, you are more than welcome to it, girl. And while we're at it, Cat Merch couldn't help but make a commentary on the female disc golf content creators either. Best part of Ledgetone is the Casey's Gas Station Snacks, and what is one of the weirdest walks between holes on tour? By that I mean, one of our premier DGBT stops has you leapfrogging a highway guardrail to get to the next hole. Barbasol, the Beard Buster, perfect container to smuggle Jurassic Park Dino DNA, and a blast at sleepovers announces them extending sponsorship of the DGBT Championship. Can I ask a quick question? How is Barbasol still around? I'm still using the same can going on three years now. Adam Hammes pulls a $5,000 card once back in the States, while Gannon does his best impression showing his Happy Meal pulls. The Hammes impressions didn't stop there as Jakub Semerad had to get in the mix. Simon Lazat's taco autograph putter sells for over 460 US, going to prove that Simon can just sell anything. Barstool Sports has gotten in on the froth action, posting a video along with Big Cat getting in some action by posting his gas station disc pics. Helen Hanley gets sponsored by Zuka. Can't wait for more of those f***ing commercials. Chris Dickerson got in some pup pup. Greg Barsby hits the 500th event played while over in Iceland. Big Germ's dog passed away but lives on in tribute on his bag. Condolences goes out to him. Our boy Tomas Hutenen hits Venice and the Italian mountains. Whatever floats your gondola, I guess, Thomas. And guys, that wraps up this week in disc golf. If you've enjoyed and not subscribed, make sure to do so as it helps fund another tour leg in this channel. Check out all the content we continue to pump out while on tour.